But all you have to do is look at your data, and what you find is the kids who have the greatest disadvantages, and the schools that are serving the kids who are poorest are the schools that are doing the least well. That's almost always the case, isn't it? And why is that? Because they not only are more likely to have the least qualified teachers, they're also most likely to have the inadequate resources. You know, I was at a school in San Diego last week, 25% of the kids are homeless, there's no social work at the school. You know what that means? It means teachers have to be social workers. So the disparities we see in access to technology and the internet mirror the disparities we see in achievement outcomes, mirror disparities in health, disparities in wealth, disparities in life chances. It's all part of the same picture. And why that is important is because if you try to focus only on one part of the puzzle, and we don't realize how they're connected, you're not going to make any headway. That's part of the reason why you've made so little headway in addressing the achievement gap. Guess what? Hungry kids don't do well in school. And kids without a stable place to live, they're probably not going to do too well either. Homework is an equity issue. If you see those kids, some of those kids that come in with a paper, looks like a lawyer wrote it, and you know very well their dad is a lawyer. Right? Privilege matters as does the fact that some kids have nobody helping with the homework. May not even have a place to do the homework. But they're being graded by something they don't control.